Good morning, everybody. Today, what we're going to talk about is some of the reasons why your chickens might be getting sick. I get a lot of questions and videos and even pictures, lots of pictures of people so, so worried about why their chickens are sick and what they could do about it. And they'll just be like, um, you know, oh, I'm so worried, like it's been going along so well and I'm a first time chicken owner and they're just loving it and having so much fun. and enjoying it and then like all of a sudden their chickens not doing well and oh my god what should I do I'm so afraid my chickens gonna die or you know they're just so so worried so I'm gonna um just talk about that a little bit and then also take questions you know what I mean if you think you know something's going on maybe try to help you first of all you know, always just realize how many of these chickens they breed in these hatcheries. It's astounding. <laughs> if you ever watch a video about it, it's mind boggling how many of these little chicks they breed and really how they handle them. They just, oh my gosh, it is amazing. So it is bound to happen, just the sheer numbers. Sometimes there's just something wrong with them. And, you know, it, you'll get it and it just seems like it's going well and then there's just something's wrong with it and it'll just die or something will happen and it'll just get sick and die or whatever. So that happens a lot. So there's nothing you can do about it. You know, you just try to keep it as comfortable as you can for as long as you can and whatever. And then other times it'll catch something. So in that case, sometimes there's something you can do about it. And then sometimes it's something they catch. There's nothing you can do about it. And you can still just keep it as comfortable as you can. And in that case, the key is just, of course, separate it from the other chickens. So the key also is don't, don't have like too many crowded in there because then it's harder to keep an eye on them. You know, if there's like tons of them in there, like you can't like tell what's going on. You know, it's just a blur of chickens in there. If you don't have too many, you can kind of like get a good look at them and kind of get to know each one, so to speak, kind of, and know kind of how each one gets to act over time. And you kind of see like, well, it's acting a little weird, you know, something's not quite right and keep an extra eye on it or whatever. <laughs> That's what I do. So you kind of really, and then you really get to know your animals and you can quickly tell, you know, if something's going on. And really that helps you be more efficient as time goes on in your homestead and how you keep things going. And it really helps you be just efficient and fast and things running smooth. So that's the way you want to keep it. Some of the things I think that causes problems down the line is not keeping things like as clean and neat as tidy as you should so in time sometimes we just get busy you know in the beginning we start out we're like gung-ho and we get it all perfect and we get it all going and then we're just like six down six months down the road and we're just like oh like this has kind of been like a big project and Oh, we got it off the ground and it was a lot of work and you're almost like, whoo, you know, you're over the hump and then just kind of take a breather and then things kind of go downhill maybe a little bit, you know, get a little messy, take a little slack there and that's when a few problems can set in. So you got to be careful that you don't do that. You know, got to kind of really, if you make the commitment to get the animals and do all that, you, it's really, a, it is a commitment. And you do have to keep things at a certain level for the whole time. I mean, of course, there's going to be slight little ups and downs, but you do have to try to keep things at a certain level for the whole time you have them. And that does take a certain amount of like stamina and strength and commitment from you that you have to be able to put into it. 
So you have to just feel like if you have that in you to do that, if you're that kind of a person that you want to do that. And if you're like, mm, no, I'm more like a couch potato type person. <laughs> That's the kind of life I want to live. Like at least be honest and know yourself and then just don't go down that road. Or if you are like more of an outside person and you like, no, like I do have the energy and I'd like to do that. You know, I feel like I want to do more in life. Then you're going to be the perfect candidate to do, you know, go out and kind of go down the homesteading lifestyle go down that road and get chickens and do that stuff. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. It's going to be so much fun. Well, yeah. I think that I think that microphone is bad. So you should take the microphone off and go back to the little box. Oh, you're kidding me. Is that annoying again? Okay, so hold on. Let me get it out. Let's just throw this. We're back. Testing. Can you hear us good now? Is it on? Talk so they can see if they can hear you good. Okay. I'm just I'm just waiting to see if you turned it back on. Is it working? Yeah, I think it sounds great. Oh good. Okay, he's got it going. That's it. We're done with the wire. I'm so sick of the mic problems. It's very annoying. Okay, so we're sorry about that. We're at a hotel today. We're in, we're in Orlando. <laughs> My boys brought me to a condo for a, just, a, just a little vacation over the weekend. So if you hear a little noise, that's what we're doing. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> just a nice little vacation. There was a big pool. I just got to tell you, there's this big pool with a slide. A couple big, huge slides. <laughs> So they're like, come on, you got to go down this slide. So we had a little fun whipping down the big slide yesterday, playing in the pool. So we got a $4.99 super chat from Amber. It's the parent oh. giving a little happy dance. Oh, Amber, you are so funny. <laughs> That's cute. Those, you always give me a giggle. <laughs> Very cute. Thank you, Amber. <laughs> Amber likes the painting behind you. It's just from the hotel. Yes, yes. They do have artwork. This hotel is so funny. It's huge, huge, huge. And the it's I said I feel like a mouse in a maze because it's just hallway after hallway after hallway. And I just follow <laughs> to get to the room. I go, I feel like a mouse in a in a maze. I'd never get there. And then I just joke around when we get off the elevator. I'm like it's a left and a right and a left and a right. I mess everybody up. <laughs> <laughs> which way to go <laughs> so we get lost <laughs> gotta have a little fun <laughs> okay so anyway if anybody has any homesteading questions we can answer those it doesn't have to be about chickens it really can be about anything we do like to promote the homesteading lifestyle about anything I know we do Talk about chickens One a lot. One thing you could talk about right now is how to find a good pet sitter. Because yes. we're on vacation and you have a yeah. homestead, so talk about that. Yeah. Well, anyway, what I was saying is um, we, we can talk about anything in the homesteading realm. We do talk a lot about chickens because it's almost like chickens are the gateway drug to homesteading. <laughs> because um, it, is, it is a lot of people do start with chickens, to tell you the truth, because... They are cute and they're available. You know, we do see the baby chicks a lot. A lot of people do go into a store and they do see them first. You know what I mean? And it does spark their interest. So, you know, and then they start with that. So we do talk a lot about chickens, but it's just so much bigger than that homesteading is. 
So if there's any other questions, we're so happy to answer those other questions as well. And we got a $9.99 super chat from Seeds Insanity. Oh, well, there you go. Seeds Insanity. So if there's other and questions about gardening or other stuff, I'm so happy to talk about other stuff as well. So I just want to make that crystal clear to people. And they have a question. It okay. is tips to introduce our four... 13 week old hens to my five, four to six month old hens. One is really being mean to the younger ones. Oh. So I have them in a separate coop at night and they free range during the day. Yes, you do have to keep those separate for sure. Thank you for your super chat. And, um, I appreciate that. Um, yes, you do have to keep them separate because until they're physically the same size, they will beat up each other and pick up on each other. Um, once they're the same size, they can't tell ages of each other, but they can tell sizes of each other. And that determines the pecking order a lot of times. Also breeds, you know, certain breeds have characteristics and some are timid and sweet characteristics of the breeds. And some are more bold and feisty characteristics. So, you know, if you're trying to mix two different characteristic types in one flock, you know, it's always going to be kind of problems. And so you're going to have to have either a bigger coop or a bigger hen house at night for them so they can just naturally separate themselves, which they will. Like the roost is going to either have to have one on this side and one on that side and they will naturally separate and sleep on different sides, or it's gonna have to be a super long roost, and then like the timid ones will be on this side, and the feisty ones will be on this side. So, or, you know, the bigger ones will be on one side, and the smaller ones will be on the other side. And, um, you know, since they free range during the day, that's probably fine because they can separate far apart during the day themselves. You, it's, very, very risky to have them in a coop and put little babies in with big chickens. They will kill them. I tell people that all the time. You know, the bigger ones will kill the little ones. So it's not a good idea at all. So it sounds like you're doing pretty good. You know, keep a good eye on them and keep them separated. <laughs> Amber, our channel member, says that Amber. one of her chickens died because the neighbor poisoned mice and mm -hmm. they, she found a dead mi mouse by the chickens. Yes. So maybe the chicken ate a poisoned mouse. Absolutely. Yes, that will happen. Chickens will eat, a mouse will get poisoned by the arsenic, you know, the rat poison arsenic. And then like your, your cat will eat that poisoned mouse. Your chicken will eat that poisoned mouse. Your dog might play with it or eat it. A lot of different animals can eat that poisoned mouse. So yes. That absolutely can happen. Sadly, that can happen. Kimmy says that she, uh, she just received our book in the mail. Hi, Kimmy. Thank you. And that she's digesting everything for her new chicks. They're three weeks old and they're building their coop. How exciting. Yes. So exciting. I hope you enjoy it. And, you know, if you have additional questions, you can always email me and I, I'll try to explain it further or, you know, just give you encouragement, whatever you need. <laughs> well, you should tell people how we updated our merch store and there's all kinds of new cool things to buy on there and it's the, it's the top link in the description below. Yes, we, we, Scott has been working very hard on that so he's put some merchandise in our store that you might enjoy and have a little fun with and so you can click the link if you want to have a look at that and just browse through there. If you want a Becky's Homestead dog bandana, uh, we might be able to help you out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, so um, I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm looking, looking out the window at this hotel. I lost my sight. We're seven stories up. <laughs> I could turn the camera and they can see. Should we show them the view? Yeah, we can show them the view. I, I'm so sorry. I just looked out the window and lost my thought. It's hard to. You can walk over there too. Okay. 
So we're like, we said we want the quiet part. It's so funny. We said we want the quiet part and we did overall get the quiet part because obviously it's like the party weekend. So this is like the little pond and there's like, it's not the best view because it's the construction side. But just our luck, we get the crazy party people down below us that were screaming and yelling all night. We were like, oh my goodness, how do we get these people below us? But thankfully, they're not too bad this morning. But um, it's seven floors high. It's gigantic. But um, it's actually pretty fun. They have a like a water park. They have like a water park. You know, in the it's like a resort. They have like a water park where it's the slides and then like tubes. You like can float around. It goes around and around. And then a big pool. And then they have an area where you can just, it's like a path they made all heavily planted with plants and you can just go for a walk like a mile and um, mile and a half. And then they have this little place where you can go with a pond. Of course, there's alligators in Florida and it's so adorable. We walked out, there's like this little wooden place where you can stand and there's this cute, cute little boy. He's like nine years old. He's like fishing and there's this alligator about this big laying down below in the water floating just like this just floating and this little boy has just this little flimsy fishing pole little adorable boy so he's like throwing his little hook with bread just white bread and I'm like oh aren't you afraid the alligator is gonna like you're gonna hook the alligator with the hook and then it's gonna hurt him because it's gonna be stuck in the alligator and he's like no no it, it, the alligator won't eat it he's like um I'm catching a fish and it's like, he's, I'm catching a fish. So he, he like, oh, he gets a fish. And then he goes, I feed it to the alligator. So he gets the fish. I think the worker was his grandpa. I, I, he, they didn't say it, but it seemed like it. So then the older man takes a picture of him. And he gets the fish, and he tries to drop it down on the alligator. Because he knew the alligator's name, and it only had one eye. So he drops the fish down. And the alligator didn't even catch the fish. It was too slow. I don't think it was that hungry, but it was just so cute. The little boy, like, trying to feed the alligator the fish. It was, it was just so cute. So then, what else does this place have? We got a $9.99 <laughs> super chat from Linda. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> and it's the, pair, it's the pair saying thank you and bowing. Oh, so sweet. It's not on there. Where's right the? There. Oh, I see it. I see it. It's the pair. Oh, thank you, thank you. And then we got a four ninety nine super chat from Amber, <laughs> and it's the lady laughing. Is it the lady laughing? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm sharing my little weekend with you. Okay, want me to tell you what else I did? Am I boring you? <laughs> I don't want to bore you. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to tell you what else. So then, um. What else? So, what else did we do, Scott? We went to the mall. Oh yeah, we went to the mall. We walked around there a little bit. We got really good seafood restaurants. A lot, of, a lot of the mall stores were closed, though. Some were absolutely closed. Sage and Stone says they named their chicken after you. Oh, that's so cute. So many people tell me that. I think there's a lot of chickens named Becky. That's so funny. Which I'm very flattered. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, my my sister named her chicken Sunshine. Or no, her cat. Her cat. <laughs> it's on Becky Sunshine, which I think that's so sweet. My sister did that. Um, but then we went to the mall, and they have a um, what, what's that? What, what's that watch store? Tag. Yeah. Hewer. Yeah. To the Tag Hewer store, which I which like. I, which I could. I like better than Tell my Breitling. News, my news that I, since Wednesday, I got a letter that I'm officially accepted into college. So now I'm a college student. Scott's going to go to college, which is good. Education is good. And which is good is he can work from home. So for all the homesteading people out there and people that are considering homesteading and want to make a living, because we do get a lot of questions like, oh, if you're a homesteader, how do you make money? So you can do computer work from home. You can make a living that way. You don't have to like drive into a job. You can do stuff from home. So 
And you could also go to college from home too. Yeah, my college is completely online. It's 100% online. Right. So it can be like this whole well, actually not lifestyle. 100 because you have to. Um, it includes a lot of certifications, and for those, you go to the college and a testing, the testing facility. Room. Yeah, you go to the testing. But room. I mean, come on, nothing's absolutely well, no, I'm not 100 percent perfect. But I think that's good. That way, they you know they know you're doing right. right. There's a lot of options for this homesteading lifestyle for people. You know what I mean? Which is fabulous. And you know, not everybody has to be a nine to five lifestyle. Like you can be an awesome life as a homesteader. Yeah, you just put a little effort into it and it Amber There's another road. There's like another road for people, yeah. another option. Amber did a dollar ninety nine super chat and says what is <laughs> Thank the you, Amber program and it is Western Governors University, which is regionally accredited, which is that's what you want in a college. You're not you don't want Bob's discount college that's in a strip mall, you know. You, you want a regionally accredited college, and it is. And it's, I'm doing uh, computer cyber security because they said, um, I looked into it a lot, and there's a very high demand in that field. And also, that degree, even if I do something slightly different in computers, eventually, having the degree in security Everything needs security, so that's just a good foundation, but I'm still going to try to do security first. So I just think it's, I think it's going to work out. Yeah. And you have to have a starting point. Yeah. Like, everybody has to have a starting point. So, you know, that's what you do. You have to choose something. Yeah. So try to choose something logical, and you have a starting point, and you can move forward yeah. from there. And really, the whole point at the end of the day is you can live the homestead lifestyle. Yeah and be a homesteader and do a lot of interesting things and have a career and you just it really just takes a little effort to design your life to be a homesteader yeah. and not just be a typical nine to five yeah. ham and egger and you can live a, a fun exciting frugal lifestyle mm -hmm. you don't have to like just keep striving 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 for that money you know what i mean you can have a very exciting fun lifestyle you know, and have a frugal lifestyle. So that's what you have to do. You just have to map it out. You map it out. You plan it out, you know. Amber, Amber says that she works from home as a grant writer. Good. That's a great career, yeah. Yes. That's a good one. A good. That's amazing. Good, good. I, gotta, I should have had her help me uh, write my proposals for scholarships because I applied for a lot of scholarships. Yeah. And they want you to write a bunch of stuff. We got a $5 super chat from Kristen. Thank you, Kristen. <laughs> Do you think Buff Orbington Hen Rhode Island Red Rooster Mix is a good chicken? I have seven with my latest hatching. Um, Rhode Island Reds Mix do seem to be good. A pure Rhode Island Reds, I'm not a fan of. I just, um, for one thing, I think they're kind of aggressive. And Rhode Island Red Roosters are very aggressive. So I don't know how you handle that Rhode Island Red Rooster, but good for you. <laughs> I love Buff Orpingtons. I think they're so beautiful. I just, oh, they're just beautiful. So I actually do think that should be a nice mix for you. And good for you. I just love hatching the little chicky babies. They're just, nothing's cuter. Nothing is cuter. So I think that uh, I think you should really enjoy those. Asnak says, "Can't believe I caught you live at Becky. You look great." Oh, thank and you. And then Asnak says, "I love working from home. It's the best." It is the best. It's very, very enjoyable. I think you have a healthier life when you do that. I just think you enjoy your work more, actually, and I just overall think you enjoy your life more. And you're healthier. I just overall, I think if you can arrange it that way, <clears throat> I, I, I just think it's better, you know. And I think if parents can do that and then maybe steer their kids that way, I just think everybody benefits. Amy says, guess what, Becky? I caught a wild swarm of bees. Oh, so lucky now you. I have bees on my little homestead. I love I've bees. been dreaming of this. Yeah. That's the Amy. Good, Amy. Very good. You know, I don't catch them, but I tell you, I have like um, made those native bee houses where they just bore in there, which they are great pollinators. And I've just 
attracted those and I have so they're mason bees which are native pollinators and that's what we had here in America before they imported all the honeybees and I'm telling you I have so many of those on my property now which are great but uh, yeah I love bees my sister lucky her she just has a wild hive in a tree at her house and she's just had it there for years and it just splits and splits and splits but it just stays there in that tree of hers so oh yeah good for you but she doesn't capture it or touch it it just you know splits and then the younger I don't know if you know this but the when a hive splits the older part leaves and the younger part stays so I don't personally want to keep bees because I just like wild and let it happen you can't do it all yeah yeah uh Tyler says, hi, Becky. I have chicks that I love as much as your channel. <laughs> and I knitted them a nest that they sleep in. It's so cute. Somebody told me that, too. That is so funny. And, then, and Tyler says, what breed is your turtle? Tell us about your turtle. Oh, my turtle, Daisy. That's Tyler. Who I love. She is a red foot. Now, I, I always forget if she's an African red foot. I always forget what she is. I know she's a red it's foot. It's just red foot tortoise. Yeah, she's a red foot tortoise. Which forest tortoise. Yes, so she would live, you know, in the woods. She's so spoiled, and she's a brat, and she's a spoiled brat, and she knows what she wants. She moves the furniture. You'll see. She's I a, call bull, her, a bulldozer. I, I call her the ghost because you'll just be <laughs> sitting there, and you'll see, like, the table mo just move. Not table, just sofa. Or a chair will just move. She it's moved her. the sofa the other day. She's so strong. <laughs> she just cracks you up. Of course, she's not loose in my cabin all the time. But, you know, we do let her out because she has to have exercise. And she'll let you know when she wants out. So, because she'll just, like, scratch on the side of her tub, which she has outgrown. I have to build her a bigger you know, like box where she has her light and she, her little cave where she goes in there and sleeps and stuff. And, but she also likes to sleep in the back of my closet where it's very dark, but she likes, she like lets you know which one she wants and when, and she's so funny, but she, if I let her out too much, she will poop on my tile in my house. And so, which of, thank God it's tile. It's pretty easy to clean, which I don't like when she does that, but I love her so much that I'm just like, oh, that's why I call her Poopsy Daisy if she poops on my tile. But of course, I hate when she does that. But anyway, she's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I was just like, oh, I pick her up. I'm like, you are so heavy. And I, I got to weigh this thing. I'm like, it weighs as much as the dog does. And Mario used to weigh eight pounds, but I did weigh him and he weighs 10 pounds now. And I weighed her and she weighs 7.4 pounds. So she almost weighs as much as my biggest chihuahua. And Fifi weighs four pounds, a little over four pounds. So she weighs w way more than Fifi. <laughs> but she's so cute. When she wants to eat, she, she will come in the kitchen. Like, whatever I'm cooking, she smells it. And the more she wants whatever you're cooking, like, the more she likes it and she wants it because she smells it, the more aggressive she is to come after you. So if she really wants it, she really comes after you. So the other day I was making chicken liver and she was practically chasing me around. <laughs> so I had to cut up some raw chicken liver and I gave her a little bit of that. And oh, she gobbled that up. She really wanted that. So I don't give her much meat at all because I, you know, she just needs a tiny bit because she would capture some bugs outside. So, you know, I just like figure as much as she, a few bugs would be. I give her a little bit. And then, of course, the rest would be vegetables and stuff. <laughs> Izzy wants to know how you can leave your chickens alone for the weekend. So we never really talked about finding a pet yeah. litter. And how, talk about that. I, I never leave my animals alone. I have dear friends that take care of my animals when I'm away. I have a house sitter that stays at my cabin and takes care of my animals. <laughs> So that's, that's what I do. You have to make arrangements when you have, and my friends are all homesteaders as well. So they know how to take care of everything. 
you know, I couldn't just like get just anybody and be like, hey, come take care of my whole homestead because they'd be like, huh? You know, they, would, they wouldn't know how to do it. So you have to. So um, ASNAC is talking about how they want to get a uh, USDA loan or something to buy a home or a land. I, I'm looking here. But we could, we did Florida, Florida Farm Credit. It's a, it's a company. Mm -hmm. And that's where we got a loan from. They're good. I would look into them. Uh, but that's just a that's just a loaning company. Yeah, but they're good. Like we went to a lot of different banks. Yeah. We dealt with a lot of different companies. And but I don't know if he's talking about like cheap. some special. No, I think they're trying to buy a homestead. Oh. Yeah, as an act. Okay. But Florida Farm Credit is great. Yeah. For... No, I don't know if he's trying to think of if that's she. a, a she's a a program. No, you know what I mean? You're trying to buy a homestead. Yeah. Well, you just have to, you go apply. You have to go apply and see if you qualify. They'll look into your finances and your job and see if you qualify. That's how you do it, you know? You just go qualify, go apply. And if you're trying to find land, Becky's book, Becky's Guide to Buying Land, the link is in the description. It has a lot of great tips on yeah, it'll how to help find you. and buy land. Yeah, because you have to, you know, see if the land is something you want to buy. You know, it's not just like what you see is not what you get. You have to make sure, you know, you look into that and make sure who's selling it really owns it, if the deed is clear. Yeah, so Amber wants to know about how we paid for Becky's homestead, well, how we bought our land. So Becky's homestead, or with the original money. one, you just bought with money. We pay with money. Because <laughs> you sold your house down in the city. Yes, but I... Homestead Park, we bought with a loan from Florida Farm Credit. Yes. The Becky's homestead that I live on now, I just paid with cash because I had a home that I was making a payments on, but I had enough equity in that when I sold it that I was able to buy what I have now and pay cash for. And I was only able to do that because I built my cabin myself. <laughs> so I bought a tiny little cabin kit and built it and lived in a tent when I did it, went out, you know, while I built it. So that allowed me to be mortgage free. And so now mortgage free. And so, but having Jumping from that to Homestead Park, Scott selling his mortgage-free place and me selling my mortgage-free place and jumping to Homestead Park, which is a bigger, um, we did have to take out a mortgage, a it's little very mortgage. very small and my plan is to pay it off as right. fast as possible. And so by the time we both sell and move over there, we'll be able to pay off that tiny little mortgage very quickly and be mortgage-free again on a bigger property. So it's like a little finagling to get to a bigger property and still be mortgage-free quickly. So it's like, oh, it's like, you know, it takes a little finagling, a little work, but it's, it's worth it in the end. You know, sometimes you do, you do take a little risk and you work hard to get into a good position. But, you know, that's what you do. But it put, put some thought into it, you know. Don't just, don't just, like, make a move, a stupid move quick. You know, put some thought into it. Map out a plan, you know what I mean? And put some thought into it and then make a move. Then you move quickly, you know. It's, don't just move quickly. Put some thought into it. Map out a plan. Then you move quickly. That's how you do it. And then you can do it. You guys all can do it. You can do it. You know, just like we do. We're not special. We're, we're not like um, loaded down with money. We weren't born like privileged. No, none of that. None of that. Like we're just ordinary. So you guys can all do it just like we can. I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. I'm confident. You guys can all do it. Just step by step. That's how you yes, do it. Yes, just, just take step one by step. step. At a time. Just like we can. You can do it too. We, um, we got a $1.99 super chat from Amber. Thank you, Amber. What are the best, cheapest steel building builders? Um, okay, so we're not experts in this. We do look around, you know, we read everything we see, you know, all the ads and stuff. We'll see like, oh, this looks like a good one. And then we'll just read about it. 
And a lot of times what draws our attention is the look of them. Like just the design will just, the style will just be like, oh, that looks like a good one. So, you know, something will catch our eye. Well, we'll, I can, we yeah. haven't, we, I mean, we've never used one. So we couldn't yes. say yet, but I can tell you the two I'm looking at the most and that I'm thinking about using the most. And one is General Steel and the other one is Reed's Metal Buildings, which is more in the Southeast United States based, I think. Um, so those two companies are like my two finalists that I'm really looking into a lot. The only, the only metal building we've done so far is my barn. Yeah, but I don't even know what company that is. That I mean, was like Tubular local, Steel. It's like a local company. Yeah, that was Tubular Steel, which I'm not sure that, I don't think that's local, Tubular Steel. I don't think they do everything everywhere. But the thing is, you see those places that sell them everywhere and they're all slightly different. So how, how could we tell somebody like, go get this? But what you don't understand is <clears throat> Tubular Steel does it everywhere. There was the distributor. Okay. Well, yeah. That, that building is very nice. So yeah, they're good too. Then. Yes, yes. So very nice. My barn's very, very nice. So that's the only like um, experience we have so far. And so... That's the, only, that's the only thing we can speak of so far. Mickey, Mickey wants to know if you can keep bantams with your bigger hens or will they pick on each other? Well, we, um, bantams are very, um, I want to say dodgy. <laughs> that's the term I want to use. So um, I don't think they'll pick on each other. They, they kind of separate, you know what I mean, on their own. Um, like I said, if they have plenty of room, the key is leave plenty of room and they will kind of separate. Always the key with chickens is let them have plenty of room and they will kind of separate. You really have to look and read the breed descriptions on their personalities and try to build your flock where their characteristics are similar. So you don't, you don't want to put Rhode Island Reds with black astral orbs. I mean, yes, there's going to be people out there that'll be like, well, I did it. And you know, they're fine. Okay. Okay. You did it and it's fine. But I mean, if you, if you want to build a successful flock and have no problems, just why not try to put breeds with similar characteristics together? I mean, that's what I would do. Of course, anybody can do whatever they want. Everybody's free. But I try to take a path where I'm going to have the least problems on my homestead because I like peace and quiet. I don't know about anybody else, but that's what the road I'm taking. <clears throat> so the key is, you know, just try to give everybody plenty of room as well. That way you will have, you know, more success. And bantams are cute, and bantams come in different breeds as well. You know, it's almost like every chicken breed, just smaller. So just also see, you know, what bantam you're talking about. Because, like, you can get um, a bantam barred rock, and then you can get a bantam, you know, what, what, what do we have now? I think you can get a bantam of, like, Anything. pretty much any breed. Yeah. So. Most. Because we had a bantam barred rock, and it was a little stinker. Yeah. <laughs> and then, he was a little stinker, And then he? we have a bantam, what, what is little Jules? I think name? he's game fowl. Yeah, something, and he's yeah. a darling. He's, he's a gem, that's why his name is yeah. Jules. Yeah, so, you know. I call him my spicy little chicken nugget. Yeah, he's so cute. So he'll just stand there, he's a little rooster, and you can just, the other day he was on my garden, and I was like, Jules, what are you doing up there? And he just, he just like moved over a little, and I, you can just pick him up, he's so cute. Oh, but then he'll jump on the, the bed of the pickup truck around the edge, <laughs> and he struts, like that's his little stage, and he goes all around it, <laughs> strutting and dancing, I don't know who he's dancing for, there's nobody around, and he's just dancing and strutting, and crackle doing a million times, he just... That's his little stage up there. He so loves cute. it. So cute. He's so cute. He really is cute. We so, got a $9.99 super chat from Amber. And it's the Chihuahua. Amber! I'm just like, oh, you're so sweet. So sweet. I would give you a hug if we were close. <laughs> so this sweet. The Chihuahua squeezing the heart. Oh, Chihuahuas are so... I'm sure my two Chihuahuas are dying at home without me. I have this little basket. We call it the weeping basket because when I'm not there, they're in their little weeping basket. They're probably all gloomy just laying in the weeping basket. They're ridiculous. 
Because I've seen it before where sh my mom will leave on, on vacation or something without, you know, go by I'll ride. I, that's what I, I'll, I'll be, go horse camping. I'll be there. The chihuahuas, they just sit in the weeping basket with the most miserable look on their face the whole time she's gone. I'm just like, get over it. It's so ridiculous. So ridiculous. They have everything in life. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, what time is it? Because we can't, we have to make this pretty short because... We're only 40 minutes in, Mom. I know, but we have James. My son James is waiting. James and Jenny are in the other room, and, you know, they're so sweet. So sweet waiting. Are we going to... Dead Cell wants to know if you can mix Buff Orpingtons and Black Astrolorps. Um, let me just think. Yes, those two you can mix. I would mix those two. I would mix those two, for sure. Those are nice braids. I think those two would and mix. that's Dead Cell. De okay. I, dead Cell, I would... Um, that's such a funny name, Dead Cell. Schluff it off. I think it's the name of a video game. Oh, is it? Um, dead Cell. I, I would mix those two in a coop, and I have mixed those two in a coop, and I didn't have any problems with them. So, And those two mix, they're so pretty. You have the big, poofy gold and then the black ones they're so beautiful john wants to know how we built our homestead <clears throat> with you know the, the permits and everything okay john so what we did is i contact the county i'm friendly with the county people um i just call them and talk to them i find they were friendly nice you know a lot of people are like oh the county and i never find that to be true if you approach with a stinky attitude you know, I don't know, maybe they give you an attitude back, but I was, couldn't be nicer to them. And they were nice, couldn't have been nicer to us. Never had a problem. Never had a problem. Ever. Ever. Answered all the questions, chatty, yeah, getting friendly. getting permits isn't that hard. You just, yeah. like anything, it's step by step and you just do it. Yeah. And it's not that big a deal. Yeah. Not that big of a deal. Especially, especially if you're building a smaller house. Yeah. It's not a huge project. And we did a video a few months ago talking about how, why we like a steel building if you're building yourself because you don't want a weird house. Yeah. And when you go to the get your permit, if the steel building is very cut and dry, it's not weird. They're not going to be like, wait, what's this, huh? I'm confused. It's very cut and dry. They'll be like, okay, boom, here's your permit. You know, get out of here. And, and you can get stamped blueprints from yeah. the, the manufacturer of the steel building. Yeah, so and just like I did from the log cabin company. Mm -hmm. And another thing is also you want, you want all your permits and everything because in the future, if you're going to sell, you'll have everything in order. You know, people try to sneak and build a house and not get permits and they're back in the woods and everything. But then, luck selling it. you know, then they'll be like, oh, you know, my parents need me. They live in Montana. We're going to sell and go live with my mom and help her because my father, you know, they need us or whatever. You can't sell because, you know, unless somebody has cash to buy your property, nobody can finance it. No bank will finance it. And you can't sell because you don't have a, you don't have a CO. So it's like you're really hurting yourself not doing everything right. And like, so that's a huge investment that you're putting into the place that you'll never you'll be able never to get sell. Your, yeah, you'll never get your investment back. It's so stupid. Like just do everything the right way so you can get a return on it in, in the future. You know what I mean? It's just, it's not good to try to sneak and do it, you know, the wrong way. Just do it above board. And then you can just... There's no sneaky secrets. You can just do everything, sell it, you know, finance it. Even, even if you do it sneaky and then you're like, oh, I need an equity loan. Like some crisis happened in your family and you want to go get an equity loan. You can't. Kimberly says, I have told so many people about how much I love watching Becky's Homestead. <laughs> Thank you for all I do. I'd love to be you working to get there. Well, Thank Kimberly, you, Kimberly can buy some merch. I should say it again. We have new merch. It's the top link in the description. Go get some uh, Becky's Homestead t-shirts. <laughs> 
Thank you, Kimberly. I'm so, so happy you enjoy it. And thank you for telling people. I mean, that means a lot to me. I hope they watch too. <laughs> Patricia says, good morning. I'm about to be good a first morning. time chicken mama. Good, good. Oh, you're going to love it. I wanted buff Orpingtons oh, from yeah. your suggestion, mm -hmm. but they only had lavender Orpingtons. They're beautiful too, though. Yes. And I ordered three. Good. Perfect. And that's Patricia. Good, Patricia. Perfect. Perfect. That's the perfect amount. Don't get too many. Like I tell everybody, you can always get more later. These people that are like, I got 20. I'm just like, oh boy. Oh boy. You know what I mean? Like why? You don't need 20. And then they'll be the people telling me later, I got 20 chickens and they don't lay eggs. And I'm just like, because <laughs> so I do it all wrong. A lot of people who are late to the party are wondering where you are. Oh, um, uh, my two sons brought me to Orlando for a little vacation this weekend. My sweet boys. So nice of them. So they rented a three bedroom condo that is so beautiful. We'll show them again. Okay. No, you show them out there. I think you should well, show the them the condo. The view is where it's at. It's not the greatest view. And I'm going to tell you why. We told them we went way in the back where it's quiet. We are country people. We're in the front, we pulled in, and it's like this loop where you check in. And all the balconies faced the loop, and they were like hooping and hollering. And I'm like, oh, boy, don't put me in this loop over here where everybody was hooping and hollering. But show them. It's like, it's like a... Want to do a, do a cribs tour? Hold on. It's just like washer dryer, full kitchen, three bedroom... Over there is like this fancy bathroom dressing area. Two bathrooms. Bedroom, bedroom. Right here is like the master suite. Big fancy soaker, tub, shower. It's like balcony. It's really fancy. And it was very affordable <laughs> because of the uh, you know what that's happening right now. The you know what. Has a little fainting couch right here. TV. Am Amber says your hair looks great. Oh, thanks. You like my little updo? <laughs> okay, so anyway, so we're just like going around and like, thank God Orlando's open. So we're like going around having fun and, you know, just like spending time together. Our family. So anyway. Cameron wants to know if chickens will kill your grass. Well, any That's animal, Cameron. let me just tell you this. Any animal will kill your grass. Any animal. I don't care what you have. It'll kill your grass. So I say, who cares? I hate grass. Do you like mowing your grass? Because I hate mowing my grass. I would wish I didn't have any grass. <laughs> so, um, Chickens don't kill your grass eating your grass. Any animal kills your grass, like walking on your grass and like scratching your grass. So wherever your coop is, you're not going to have any grass. And so... That's just like, who cares? I like to tell people, put your coop under a big shade tree anyway. So a lot of times under a big shade tree, there's like not a lot of grass anyway. So, and don't get a million chickens, you know, just to have a few chickens under a big shade tree, kind of over in a shady spot. And then you can have your lawn out there and let your chickens out to free range for two hours late in the afternoon. They can run around in the grass and they just go on the edge to pick the bugs anyway. And then when the sun's setting, they're going to go back in their coop and go to bed. So your grass will be fine. That's how you can manage your chickens. And just get, you know two, three, four chickens, and you'll be able to manage them just fine. Linda says, by the way, Becky, I took your advice and started giving my chickens sardines in the morning, and mm -hmm. it worked well ever since. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, some people will be like, oh, I can, you know, it'll give them a fishy taste. Well, then don't give them sardines. Give them some other kind of meat, you know. Just give them mealworms or... You know, just figure something else out. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, good. Yeah, they need that protein. They just need, they need meat. They need some kind of meat. Linda and Tony said they got their first fresh chicken eggs today and they were amazing. 
<laughs> and they're on vacation too. Oh, good, good. I know. It, you know, it's good to get away. And it's so good to have your fresh eggs, Linda and Tony. It's so, so delicious. It's like, I bet you enjoyed that. <laughs> and thanks for joining us again, Linda and Tony. We, we uh, like to see you every week. <laughs> Uh, somebody, oh, the, the chat just jumped, uh, but somebody said they liked the chicken checkup episode. And, oh, yeah, uh, we have. Anne. Anne says, I'm new with chickens and I love your videos. Love the chicken checkup and I'll be here every Sunday. Oh, good. Um, we have, and we have another chicken checkup coming. We say that, but if we're just so busy. We're so busy. We we're have another one. We're going to get it. Started. I know. We keep saying we're going to, but we are, we truly are very busy. We have another one coming though. It's like all, it's like, it's this much left to go. Honestly, we'll have another one coming. And then we'll <laughs> film a new one. So we'll yes, have three. Yes. We do have another one coming too. <laughs> Okay, so I think we have to stop for today. We got a ten dollars super chat thank from you. Angie. Hi, Angie, and thank you. Angie says, "I love your videos. Uh, two Issa Browns and two Golden Comments." Oh yeah, those are nice. Loved your clipping the wings video. Oh good. Gave me confidence I needed. Girls are happy and safe. And congrats to Scott. <laughs> thank you, and Angie. Have a great weekend. Oh, thank you so much. And I hope everybody has a nice weekend as well. <sighs> okay, so we're going to... Are you, are you done? Yes. Well, I think we have to. We have to. We, we don't want to keep James and Jenny waiting, okay? Jillian says, can you please answer my question? I don't see your question, though. There's a lot of, there's a lot of questions on here. I'm just, you're not even talking. You're just standing there. <laughs> I'm looking at you and I'm waiting. So are, you, so are we done? Yes. That's what I'm telling. I'm okay. saying. Well, you were eight minutes early. Okay. Well, we're going to stop eight minutes early then. And okay. Well. Okay. So we will see you next Sunday. And I'm sorry we're eight minutes early, but we have to go today. And I'm glad everybody joined oh, Jillian us. Jillian wants to know if Bantams can raise normal chicks. Bantams can have babies and they will raise their babies. So yes, they will. And they'll be such cute little babies and you will just die of their cuteness. <laughs> so yes, they can. So we'll see everybody next week. Happy homesteading. Bye-bye.